Hi, it's Miles here at Fabricana. Before we get started on today's video, I want to remind you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now for the fun stuff, today we're gonna to be making these really fun and cozy PJ uh, flannel pajamas. Um, they make a great gift. Now, if you're new to sewing, this is actually a really good first project. We've eliminated the fly, so it makes it a lot of simpler. And we've also done a nice, simple elastic waistband. So whether you want to make something for yourself, for your boyfriend, for your girlfriend, for your family, it is a great gift that can be customized for whoever you're making it for. So please follow along and enjoy. Let's talk about the things we need for this project. The first and most important thing, of course, is our flannel print. I found this really super cute gnomes fabric with this beautiful turquoise background. It's kind of Christmassy, but it's kind of good for all winter as well. It's nice and soft. I've pre-washed the fabric to get the shrinkage out of it. Um, of course, we're also going to need a pattern. So this is a pattern I've used before. It's Butterick 5537. Uh, which also lets me know that I need some elastic for the waist as well as the matching thread. So once we have our fabric prepared, we are ready to cut out. A couple things you want to check out before we actually cut into our fabric, because once it's cut, there's no turning back, is um, one is the length of our pattern piece. Now you'll find on the back of your pattern, hopefully it indicates the length. So on right at the bottom of the back of the pattern, it says side length from waist. For these pants it says 40 inches so what I did was I measured from my waist to where I want the finished pants and I found that I actually did want to lengthen my pattern so there's a spot this tissue is always so noisy but there is a spot on your pattern piece that says lengthen or shorten here so I've actually cut through my pattern piece at that point and I've inserted a three inch piece to make my pattern a little bit longer so that's the first thing I did the other thing I want to mention is to make this project really easy and quick is my pattern has a fly attachment. I'm going to actually just fold that back because I'm just going to be sewing the front seam of my pattern piece. So be quiet. Um, the other thing I want to mention is because our fabric is directional, we want all of the gnomes to be standing upright is I cut my fabric in half on the length and I've laid it face to face. So I'm just going to show you here that all of the heads of our little gnomes are going this direction and all their feet are going this way. So we want to make sure that our waistband is going to be uh, where their heads are and the hem of our pants are where their feet are. I also want to mention that your fabric needs to be on grain. We're going to do a link in the description to straightening out your fabric so you can follow that. But basically what that means is um, we want to make sure that where we've um, cut the fabric, that the fabric isn't going to twist when it's washed. So I've actually torn my fabric, and when we tear fabric, it does tear on um, the crosswise grain. Um, so that's a good tip. Um, you can see this is a torn edge here. So once we have our fabric prepared, um, we are ready to cut out our pattern piece. So once we have our pattern pieces cut out, uh, we want to mark our notches. There's this nice little double notch at the center back seam. So I'm just making a couple of clips just with the tip of my scissors. There is another notch uh, at my inseam here, and that'll be on the other side as well. Just make another clip, and that'll just make sure that when we sew the, um, the inseam that everything is lined up perfectly. Once we have that done, we're going to remove our pins. Um, the first operation I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the front crotch. We're going to be using a French seam. So we're actually going to put our fabrics back to back. So face out. Uh, I will get the pins out of my pattern and I will meet you at the sewing machine. So I have pinned my front crotch uh, in three spots. Just want to make sure that as I sew this curve that nothing's going to shift. Like I said, we're doing a French seam, so we have the right side facing out, the wrong sides are facing each other. I'm going to start at the top of the waist uh, and stitch down with a quarter inch seam allowance. So for me, that's pretty much the edge of my presser foot. So I've got my nice matching thread. I'm going to do a back stitch at the start. 
I'm going to continue sewing with a quarter inch seam. We're going to end with a back stitch. Remove the pin. So that is the first step of our French seam. Now I will show you the next step. So what I've done to prepare for step two is I went to the iron and I pressed my seam um, so that the, um, the gnomes are now facing each other. So you can see here's our seam allowance. We've rolled it around and I've pressed that edge so that quarter inch seam allowance is now encased uh, between the two layers of fabric. So now to really encase that seam allowance, we're going to stitch again, starting at the waist. This time we're going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Start with the back stitch. And we're going to continue that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way down the crotch seam. Again, we're going to take special care going around that curve that we maintain our 3 8 seam allowance. Do a back stitch at the end. Trim my thread. So when we open that out, we can see that all of those raw edges from our quarter inch seam allowance have now been encased inside the seam. So I'm going to sew my back crotch exactly the same as I did the front. Uh, we have our notches in the back crotch because it's a longer seam. So I've stuck a pin where those notches are. And then we're going to sew it exactly the way we did the front crotch. So once we have our front crotch, a beautiful French seam, and our back crotch sewn, we're going to work on our inseam. So to do that, we're going to turn our pants right side out. We're going to line up the front and back seams, and you're going to find they're starting to look a lot more like pants. We're going to pin wrong sides facing. Now as I pin, I'm putting the seam from one of the crotches to the left and one to the right so it's not super bulky right at the top of the inseam. I'm putting a pin in. We have our beautiful notches on our inseam that I'm going to match close to the top of the inseam. Put a pin, match the other one. Then I'm going to match up the hems and put a pin. I'll do that for the other leg. I'll put in a couple more pins along the inseam of the leg and then I will meet you at the sewing machine. So we're gonna start sewing our seam from the hem of one of the legs. Now our hem is kind of angled seam so we wanna make sure that we follow that angle. I'm gonna start with the back stitch. Again, we're doing a French seam along this whole inseam so we've got our fabrics wrong sides together, right sides out with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to put my needle and pivot my work. That's where our little angle for the hem was. And continue. I'm lining up my notches here. As we get to the crotch, we want to double check that one of the seams is going forward and one is going back. So the one on top is going towards the machine and the one on the bottom is coming towards me. That'll make it less bulky. And we're just coming to the other hem or other leg. Pivot my work at that little angle at my hem and back stitch. I'm going to go to the ironing board, I'm going to turn my pants around, press this seam out, and then we're going to finish step two of our French seam. So I've turned my pants uh, wrong side out and pressed that quarter inch seam to the inside. 
I'm going to continue sewing with a 3 8 minute seam allowance. Starting with a nice secure back stitch. Keeping in mind I need to pivot at that little change in the angle here. I'm going to continue sewing this. So as we come up to the crotch seam, we want to again make sure that the seams are going opposite directions. This time the seam on top is coming towards me and the seam on the bottom is going towards the machine. Once we get over that, we can just continue sewing down to the other leg hem. So we've got our pants um, at a pretty far stage. They're looking very much like pajama pants, but the waist is huge. We need to shrink that down with our elastic. So I'm using a high quality three quarter inch elastic. I find that the elastic on a lot of uh, store bought pajamas is the first thing to go, which kind of makes them unwearable because they all stretch out of shape. So get it as high quality elastic as you can. And then to figure out how um, much elastic you need, if you're making it for yourself, you can simply find where you want your pants to sit and kind of put the elastic around. It should be fairly snug. You don't want your pants to fall down but not too tight that you're uncomfortable. So once you've got that uh, for yourself, you can cut it. We're gonna go to the sewing machine and use a straight stitch to join it. If you're making your pants for somebody else, the pattern should provide an elastic guide for the size that you're making. So if you can't measure the person's waist, you can always just follow the elastic guide. So I've got my elastic sewn very securely. I actually stitched over it four times. So the next thing we want to do is we want to um, mark our waistband, our elastic, into quarters. So where I've sewn it, I'm going to fold it, and then at the other end of my elastic, I'm going to put in a pin. Then I'm going to bring that pin to where I've stitched. So I'm basically folding it in half the opposite direction. I'm putting a pin at one end, and then I will put a pin at the other end. So now my elastic is divided exactly in four. So I need to do exactly the same thing with my pajama bottoms. So my two halves are already marked with my front and back uh, crotch seams. So then if I match those up at the center and fold my pajamas, I'm gonna put a pin at one side seam. There's not really a seam here. That's where the side seam would <laughs> lay and do the same thing on the other side and put a pin. The next step is to take our elastic. Now our elastic's gonna, our elastic's gonna be a little bit bulkier where this join is and we have a little bit of bulk at the center uh, back and center front. So we're gonna have all the bulk in one area so we're actually gonna put the seam of the elastic matched with one of the um, side pins. So I'm gonna match that seam with one of the pins that I've just put in the next pin is going to match to the next seam. I'm going to put a pin in there to hold it together. So the elastic will be smaller than your pants. So we will stretch our elastic as we sew the elastic to the pants. And once we have these all pinned, we're actually going to turn our pants wrong side out. And I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So we're ready to stitch uh, the top of our waistband to the edge of our elastic. I'm actually going to start sewing where we've joined our elastic because it's going to be a little bit bulkier. So I'm just going to get that spot with, um, done with right away. We're using a straight stitch on our uh, straight stitch. We're using a zigzag stitch on our sewing machine, um, and that'll give a nice finished edge to our fabric. And just start sewing just a couple of stitches to get it secured and then I need to stretch my elastic as I sew so that everything is laying flat. You can see there's quite a bit of stretching that I need to do to get it to lay flat. Just do a little bit of a time at a time and that'll give us time to line up that raw edge with the edge of our elastic. As we approach the spot where we started sewing we're going to stitch right over our previous stitching. 
So once we have our elastic stitched to the top of our waistband all the way around, we can see it's nice and stretchy because of that nice stretchy zigzag stitch. We're ready to turn our waistband over and we're going to use the other edge of our elastic as a guide for folding. So we're just going to wrap it just like that. I'm actually going to start sewing that um, where we started sewing our zigzag stitch previously and that's where we've joined our elastic. So I'm going to turn my waistband to the inside of our pants. We still have them inside out at this point. And now we're going to be stitching uh, over the previous zigzag stitch that we've already done. I'm going to get my needle in my work and then again we have to stretch our elastic to get our work to be flat as we sew our zigzag stitch. Now you'll kind of see that the needle is actually almost going right off the elastic. That will really help to secure this raw edge of fabric because um, we don't want it to fray out later. So again, just do it a little bit at a time, keeping your work nice and flat, stretch it out so it's flat. This is probably the most difficult operation. So if you can master this, you'll be a sewing expert. We're gonna do exactly what we did before, where we do about five stitches past where we started sewing. And there we have our beautiful elastic waistband sewn. So, sometimes we have to throw continuity out the window. Uh, we can't always finish everything we want to do on one day. So here we are, another day, another outfit, a new haircut, uh, and we are going to hem our pajamas. So I've, I've referred back to my pattern that suggests a one and a quarter inch hem allowance, which is about 3.2 centimeters, uh, if you're working in centimeters. So I've lined up the hem of my pants, and I've got a ruler, and I've got a chalk marker. Uh, you can use the marker of your choice. Uh, make sure it's something that's going to wash out. And I'm simply going to mark my crease on both legs and then I will meet you with the iron. So before we stitch our hem, we're going to press it in place first. So to do that, I've turned the pants uh, inside out and I'm just going to put the hem around the end of my ironing board and then I'm going to fold back the hem along the marked line and then I'm going to press it. So I'm going to press all the way around and then the next step is going to be to take that raw edge and fold it in towards the crease that I just made. I'm going to continue that all the way around the uh, hem of both legs and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So I've turned the pants uh, right side out again. We're going to be stitching from the inside and I'm going to line up this creased edge um, just with the left of my needle. So I'm going to put my presser foot down. I'm just going to leave the needle in just to show that it's just in from that crease and I'll start stitching. As I approach where I started stitching, I'm going to overlap and backstitch. There we have it. So here we have our finished PJs ready to try on. I'm going to go for it. Thankfully, they're not for me and they're a bit bigger. So we have some very cozy PJs. All I need is a big bowl of popcorn, some hot chocolate, and a really good book to cozy up with. And I'm ready for a nice cold uh, winter evening. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, send us photos of your PJs. We'd love to see them. And don't forget to continue to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care.